you have your Bibles tonight, I ask you to turn with me to the 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll begin reading in uh, verse number 1. Paul was writing to the church of Thessalonica, and he said, For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as you know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. He said, For our exhortation was not of deceit, nor of uncleanliness, nor, of God, nor in guile. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth the hearts. For neither at any time used we flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak for, of covetousness, God is witness, nor of men sought we glory, neither of you nor yet of others, when, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you, not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because you were dear unto us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable to any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. You're witnesses in God also how holy and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. And as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children that you would walk worthy of God, who hath called you into his kingdom and glory. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jew, as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us that they may not and persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak the, to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway. For the, raft of, for the raft is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavoring the more abundantly to see your face with great desire, Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Father, I thank you for this chapter. I pray, Lord, that it would minister, Lord, to the needs of your people tonight. Father, I pray, God, for unction of the Holy Ghost. Lord, help me to lift up Jesus, high and exalted. I pray, the Lord, that he draws all men unto himself, for I ask it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. I thank you for your patience. Those that hadn't been reading your Bible, you had a chapter put in tonight, amen. Paul was writing to the church of Thessalonica, and it was a, 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 a church that was dear to his heart. And uh, not saying he preferred others above uh, certain individuals, but he had, he had worked with this church. He had, it was one of the plantings that he had planted. It was part of his missionary trip that he went and he'd started the church and God had uh, poured out his blessing on these people and uh, Paul was wanting to come and, and to be with them again and to, uh, to have fellowship with them and to, to impart some things unto them. 
And he said, wherefore, in verse 18, wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. If you remember, last week I preached a message on uh, the ways of, of the devil, how that the characteristics of the devil. And uh, man, you talking about getting attacked after that? I mean, for the next week, uh, a whole week long, every day, something happened. And uh, when I went back to study to get something else, the Lord gave me a message uh, on the works of the devil. And uh, so I'm going to preach it. Amen. The, uh, the devil is, uh, is a, a compl- he's, he's a real person. People think of the devil as being some type of fictitious character. But friend, we fight not flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. He opposes the work of God. If he can stop the preaching, he'll stop it. If he can stop Jesus from being lifted up, if he can hush your mouth, Amen. He'll hush your mouth about it. He'll try to shame you. He'll try to tell you you're not worthy to preach. You're not worthy to testify. You're not worthy to speak his holy name. Well, you know what? I'm not worthy. But God called me into uh, his service. He called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. And as Satan had hindered Paul, and I want you to know the devil uses people. Amen. The devil uses people to hinder you. The devil will use situations to hinder you. The devil will use situations to hinder you, and he'll use people to hinder you. He'll use circumstances to hinder you. He'll try everything he can to get you down. And one of the things he does is that he tries to stop the gospel from going out. He'll try his best to keep you from testifying to the saving uh, grace of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He hinders the gospel. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 3. 13 if you would in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 18 our Lord said hear ye therefore the parable of the sower he said when any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart this is he which received the seed by the wayside and he that receiveth the the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and at with Annan and with joy receiveth it, yet hath he not root in himself, but endureth for a while, for when tribulation and per- or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he become unfruitful. But he that receiveth the seed into good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also heareth, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold and some sixty and some thirty. The Lord is talking about an enemy, how that he will come and steal the word out of your heart. Let me show you how he'll do it. How many can remember what was preached a, a week ago? Amen. Or, or three services ago. And if, you do, if you can, praise God. But I'll tell you something. Usually when people go out the door, the word of God is snatched right out of their mind, snatched right out of their heart. And they don't think another thing in the world about it. Amen. That's why I try to tell you where to turn to and what book to turn to. And I quote the scripture and tell you where it's at. In case you want to go back and look these things up and be able to see if they be so or not. Amen. And so you could, the, uh, the Bereans were like that. They studied these things out and to see if they were so. They didn't just take men's word for it. Amen. They searched it out and studied it to see if these things are true. And Paul said that to the church of Thessalonica he said I was going to come to you uh, time and again but the devil had hindered me and uh, I guess he knew who it was that hindered him he didn't say the Lord forbid me from doing it he said the devil is the one that done it and friend I want you to know the devil wants to oppose everything you want to do for the glory of God Yeah, I, the, the Lord had put on my heart to do something and be, right when I get ready to do it the old smutty face would come up and say oh if you do that oh this will cost you this and it'll cost you won't have enough for this or you won't be able to do that if you do that amen 
Well, I got news for him. My God feeds me. Amen. I hadn't missed no meals. I hadn't done anything. The Lord's took care of me. He's guided me. And uh, just when it looked like I wasn't going to be able to make it, God made a way. He said, give and it shall be given to you. Press down, shaken together and running over. Shall God cause men to give into your bosom? Before I got home yesterday, a guy called me up and said, uh, we moved from Knoxville out of her house there into this place uh, it, down off Chattanooga. He said, uh, you know anybody wants some freezer food? And I said, yeah, me. <laughs> and he said, well, he said, come and get it. And I did. And I got a whole slew of freezer food. God takes care. He makes a way. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And you say, well, what's that? That's uh, better than I've been eating in a while. Amen. The Lord makes provision for you. And whenever the gospel is sown, the devil will try to steal it right out of your heart. Amen. First thing he'll say is, would you see how so-and-so was dressed? Or did you see what they look like? And he'll do everything to take your mind. I have been out preached by a wasper. Amen. I had been preaching here and a wasper dive bombed me. All people could do, the whole service, is look at this. And I looked at one of the hobby kids. I said, will you kill that thing? <laughs> and he did, amen. They searched that thing down. It was a little pandemonium for a few minutes, but I wanted to get make sure the word of God wasn't bound, amen. And the devil will use anything he can to, to hinder the word of God. He might use you by a, a, a backache or a, or a leg ache or a shoulder ache. And he'll try to get your mind off the word of God. You say, how do you know? I got a foot ache right now. He's trying to get my mind off from it, amen. But I want to be able to preach through that listen the devil would beguile you into sin he turn with me to second corinthians chapter 11 in second corinthians chapter 11 we'll see where the apostle paul writing to the church of corinth he said in verse 1 of second corinthians chapter 11 he said would to god ye bear with me a little in my folly and indeed, bear with me. He said, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husbandman. He said that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, he very wily. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Has the devil ever come to you and say, you ain't prayed enough and you ain't done this and tries to make it about a work religion and tries to make it about you and tries to make it about your, uh, your being able to, to, you know, mark every mark and cross every T and dot every I. And if you failed in any of those, he'll, he'll come to you and try to put you down. He'll try to get you to quit. Amen. He'll say, your health's no good now. You ought to just quit. He'll say, well, you can't do it. Well, you're just not able to no more. Amen. He'll, he'll do everything he can to come against you. But listen, Paul knew that Satan, as he beguiled Eve, he was concerned that they was, their minds was going to be beguiled from the simplicity that is in Christ. He said, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom ye have not, uh, have not we have not preached or you receive another spirit which ye have not received or another gospel you know not the gospel of grace the gospel of works the gospel of keeping the ten commandments plus grace the gospel of holding out and holding on and tight roping your way to heaven amen listen this man told me he said well I don't deserve to be saved and I said you're exactly right and he went, oh, I can't believe you pretty, you pretty, got a lot of gall to say that to me. I said, you're the one who said it. I just agreed with you. And I said, you want to hear something else? I don't deserve heaven. And if I have to trust my ability to hold out and hold on, I would surely fail in the, in the 12th hour. Amen. But I'm not trusting in me. I'm not trusting in the church. I'm not trusting in baptism. I'm not trusting in, in any of those things. I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on Calvary. And it was good. He hung between heaven and earth and he said, it is finished. He did not say, I am finished. <laughs> he said, it is finished. Amen. And praise God, he finished the work. He paid the payment. To the very dregs of it, friend, he finished it. 
Then he went and presented it to the Father. Amen. That's what I'm trusting in. That's who I'm trusting in. I'm trusting in the finished work of Calvary. Now, Satan, he'll try to bind you. He'll try to steal the word from you. He'll try to oppress you. In Acts chapter number 10, in verse, uh, Acts chapter 10 and 38, he tells us these words. He said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Satan still has power to oppress you. You ever have your mind depressed of where you can't even read the Bible? You can't even pray? You don't even feel, you, don't, you feel like you're a, a lower than a snake's belly. You ever feel like that? You ever feel like just throwing your hands up and just sitting down and crying? Amen. Well, you're under attack when that's happening. That's not normal. That's not normal behavior for a natural man. It's definitely not normal behavior for a child of God. The Lord said that he called us into peace and virtue. He said God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And if you got that going on, friend, there's somebody messing with your mind. <laughs> hey, man, there was an old rock and roll uh, uh, singer, and they said years ago, he said, there's someone in my head, and it's not me. And that, that sounded kind of crazy, but listen, have you ever had thoughts run through your head that was not your thoughts? Have you ever had stuff go through your mind that you know you wasn't dwelling on and just pop in there, totally off the cuff, totally, just the thought goes right through your head? Yeah. Well, where'd that thought come from? Come from That's exactly where it come from, amen? amen. I, there's been times that I had a thought say, why don't you just hit him right in the head with a hammer? I don't want to hit nobody with a hammer. Amen. And you say, well, you sound schizophrenic. Well, I got news for you. I got a dual nature. I got the nature of the flesh, the atomic nature, and I have the nature of the new man, which is created in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Not only that, I don't fight flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Therefore, God tells us to take on, because that we have a spiritual battle, he tells us to put on the armor of God that we may be able to stand, having done all to stand. And he says, stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and the breastplate of righteousness. You know what the breastplate of righteousness is? That's not, look at me, I hadn't sinned in 20 years. That's the righteousness of Christ that's imputed unto you, that God has imputed his righteousness. So when he sees you, he sees you through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Righteous altogether. That's how the Lord sees. That's the only way you can come to the throne of God is to come through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the name of Jesus, we have access into the Father's throne. Through the name of Jesus, we have access and we have power in his name. What those demons say when that guy said, I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Yeah. And he said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> you have no authority here. Amen. So in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have authority. As a matter of fact, I, I believe it's in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 20, the Lord said this in uh, Luke chapter 10 and verse 20, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Amen. What does that mean? It means they're subject to you in the name of Jesus. The disciples come back and they said, they said, Lord, even, even the spirits are subject unto us through thy name. They said, we've been casting out devils. We've been, we've been, and they begin to tell the Lord all the success that they had had in his name. And he said this, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, he said, I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions and over. And he said, in all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
God said that he would watch after us. It says in Romans chapter 8, If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but offered him up for us, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? He tells us that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm sick of not being an overcomer and, a, and having the victory all the time. Amen. God didn't call me that. He called me to have victory. He didn't call us to be a pushover for the devil. He didn't call us to be, uh, to be a, a casualty because in doing spiritual battle, he calls us to have the victorious life. Amen. And so the devil oppresses. He sifts. In Luke chapter 22. Luke's gospel chapter 22. Verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And the Lord said, but I prayed for you. What did he pray when he was praying there in John uh, 17, I think it was? He said, and I not only pray for these only, but for all them that believe through their word. Amen. So the Lord has prayed for us. Not only that, he's exalted to the right hand of the throne of God right now as our great high priest making constant intercession for us. Amen. You might fail to pray for me. I might fail sometime to pray for you, but the Lord don't fail. And he knows what we need. Amen. The Bible said we don't know what to ask for as we ought. We don't know how to pray as we ought. He said, but the Spirit itself offers up intercessions with groanings which cannot be uttered. Amen. So Satan wanted to put Simon Peter into his sift. And he had him and pretty, pretty well grinded out. Let's see here. Simon thought, he thought that he could lay down his life without a fight. Now, Simon would have went out of here swinging. And there's a lot of people that will go out, just let me blow back. Let me strike back and I'll give my life. But the Lord said, Simon, put up your sword. They that live by the sword perish by the sword. And the Lord picked up the high priest's ear and stuck it back on. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. The fact about being an overcomer, you have to die out to self. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I guarantee you, you won't lose a thing by doing that. The flesh wants its own way. The flesh wants its own way so bad, it'll do everything in the world to come against the will of God. Amen. And let me tell you something. The flesh gives ear to the devil. Your, your atomic nature, Satan can appeal to that just right, just like that. He knows what you've been, he knows what you look at. Oh, look at that. I'd like to have one of them. Oh, he wants one of them. Let me see if I can't get him that way. Oh, she's, she's wanting one of those. Let me see if I can't get her that way. And he, believe me, once he sees a stronghold, He'll take root, and buddy, he'll start, he'll start nailing you in that area. And while he's doing that, he'll say, well, ain't nobody at that church likes you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. That wasn't why I wasn't here Sunday. <laughs> I was wore out. <laughs> Amen. But he, he will do his best. He devours in 1 Peter 5 and 8. The Lord tells us this. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, he said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walked about seeking whom he may devour. Now that's God's word on it. That the devil wants to devour you. That's not my opinion of it. That's God's word on it. Satan wants to take and devour. You know what something is when it's devoured? Yeah. You say, well, what, what does he want to destroy? He wants to destroy your home, your joy, your peace, your mind, your kids. Every, everything that's good and holy about you, he wants to devour. He don't just want to wound it. He wants to devour it. 
your testimony. He wants to devour your testimony. Well, he can't devour mine. He devoured Peter's. Peter, Peter went out, man, cried, wept, wept like a baby. Amen. I've been there before. This is how Satan works, and therefore God tells us in 1 John, because this is how the devil works, God tells us how to war a good warfare. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit. First of all, if there's something coming that wants to attack the Word of God and wants to be able to attack the ministry of Christ and tries to, to, to set a bomb off, you better check that spirit. Amen. Amen. And, and believe me, the devil will tell you stuff that sounds right. Amen. He'll tell, I could give you a lot of old wise fables right now that sounds like Bible. And people say, I know what's in that Bible. I said, it's not there. Oh, I know what's in there. I said, it's not. I've looked. I looked exhaustively with a computer even. Searched the whole King James Bible. <laughs> searched every way you can search. It's not there. Sister Betty told about that. And one is you can't, you won't be able to tell the seasons. The end of time, you won't be able to tell the seasons. It's not in there. It's not in there. Amen. That sounds like it should be in there, don't it? You won't be able to tell. As a matter of fact, there is something in there. He said as long as there's seed time and harvest time, the seasons ain't going to change. The old devil throw that one in there, amen. Amen. I had a lady that challenged me. She was wanting to bet money. And I said, I don't gamble. She said, I'm telling you, my pastor, I can call him and he'll tell me exactly where it's at. And I said, I know you got confidence in the man unless he adds it to the Bible. It's not in there. <laughs> amen. But because the Lord... The word teach. I don't know about that. Well, it's, it's about the uh, discerning, about the, uh, the weather, that the sky has the pink. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's in there because I looked for it. Amen. <laughs> and I found it. Well, because that we fight this kind of a warfare, and it's not the natural thing you do, this is something you're going to have to purposely do if you're going to have victory. Okay, he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. How do you try the spirit to see if it's of God? Does it line up with the word of God? Does it line up with the spirit of God? Does it line up with the teaching, the word? Does it line up? And if it doesn't, if it's on the, the cynical side, the side of kill, steal, and destroy, I don't care how white it looks, it's still black. Amen. He said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. I had a, a preacher come here one time, and he told me, he said, Well, I believe in the resurrection spiritually. And I said, wait a minute, man. We, Jesus physically got up. And he didn't believe that. And I said, you're not saved. He said, you can't tell me I'm not saved. I said, God says you're not saved. He said, when did God say I wasn't saved? And I took him to the book. This is what you've got to believe. This is the gospel. The bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Christ, as a matter of fact, the Bible said, if Christ didn't raise us from the dead, we are of all men most miserable and still in our sins. That's what he said in 1 Corinthians 15. If Christ be not risen from the dead, you are of all men most miserable. Why? Because you believed a lie. 
But I got news for you. Christ is risen from the dead. Amen. Never to die again. Jesus said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. I'm he that was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And he's coming back. That's the blessed hope. The Lord tells us this. He said, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. He said, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. He's talking to them that who have called upon the name of Jesus. He's talking to those that had believed on Jesus Christ and received him into their heart by faith. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. You know, most people don't care too much for preachers. They find out you're a preacher, and they just, they peg you, they, they judge you. you do, I mean, you all can witness to people faster than I can for the most part, because they've already judged me. He's self-righteous, he's... <laughs> I don't know, I mean, usually somebody got to get to know you before they don't like you, but they find out you're, you're a preacher, especially a pastor. They just, they peg you. But he says this, he said, you are of God, little children, to overcome them. He said, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He said, we are of God, and he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth us not. That's one way you can tell the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. They won't hear God's word. They have no ear for it. Jesus said, he that have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. They don't want to hear it. You know why they don't want to hear it? Light expels darkness. Amen. Whenever the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ shines out, it shines out. You know why people don't want to read this book? Because this book reads them. The Bible will say, you're guilty. You're out of level. You're crooked. You need to repent. You need to get right. I'm as good as so-and-so. Well, they may be crooked too then. Amen. He says this, We, we are of God, and he that, know, he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. God said, this is how you know. You ever see Christians that don't love the word? Amen. That's a telltale. They won't hear it. They don't want to read it. They don't want to hear it. He said, by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might have, that we might live through Him. Here in His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His own Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Another place where God says he gives us the spirit. Amen. Romans 8 and 9 says, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Amen. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. When the devil tries to put fear on you, that's the second place. God said he didn't give us a spirit of fear. Amen. That's twice God said that. He said here, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because fear hath torment and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. And we love him because he first loved us. Amen. I'm out of soap. I'm going to quit washing. I hope and pray that you can see how Satan attacks. He opposes. He'll try his best. The Bible says, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. He said, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that, lest you be consumed one of another. If a devil can get you to bite and devour one another, he don't have to worry about you testifying or witnessing. Your time's going to be consumed with kill, steal, and destroy and self-justify. I'm in the right, they're in the wrong. Bible said, agree with the adversary quickly and settle it. Amen. Make peace. God's called us unto peace. Not only does he oppose the work of God, he hinders the gospel. Amen. The devil will try his best to get you not to pass out a gospel track. He'll put fear on you. You, you ever go to give a gospel? I'm, I've been preaching for 30 years, and there's been times recently I went to put a gospel track down, and like fear hit me. And I thought, I ain't afraid to do this. And I said, would you like a, a gospel track from my church? Tells how to be saved. And they can say either no or yes. And nine times out of ten, if you're nice and polite, they'll say thank you. You say, I'd like to give the invitation to the church. The address is on the back. Whole track of them back there. Whole rack of tracks. Amen. I seen a thing on the way as I was coming to church online. I looked at online some before I come here and it said, how do you take 10 people and Bible believing, how do you take 10 Bible believers and multiply it into 100 and so that the church can be self-sufficient and self-supported? And different people put all different things down. One put God gives increase. And I put. No, I put John 12, 32. I think that's what I gave. It says, Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. If you just lift up Jesus, he'll save. He'll draw. He he does it all anyway. You know how many people I've saved? Nobody. Not even myself. Now I've invited people and I've prayed with people and I've given the gospel out and I've preached and I've, I've, I've conducted altar calls. But only God can save. God gives the increase. One man soweth, another watereth, but God gives the increase. Without him we can do nothing. Amen. He's our all in all. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads just for a moment. You've heard how Satan opposes the work of God. He hinders the gospel. He beguiles in the sin. He binds. He'll do everything he can. He'll bind you with sickness. First thing I do before I go to a doctor or anything, I go to, to the Lord. Because if my sickness is an attack from Satan, I want to be healed of it. Amen. And the Lord and, and the devil can put a sickness on you. The Bible tells us that in, I think it's in Luke 13. I'm going to look here real quick and put it in your hearing. Luke 13 and 15, he said, where the Lord uh, healed this woman, he said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, she was saved woman, whom Satan hath bound. So he put this on this woman. He says, Whom Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. They were getting on to the Lord because he healed on the Sabbath. And he said, She's sick because Satan has bound, binded her. 
Let me tell you something. The devil will try to bind you mentally. He'll try to bind you physically. He'll try to bind you spiritually. Emotionally, he will try to bind you. You better know who your adversary is and put on the armor of God. Maybe you're here tonight and this kind of helped you and you want me to help pray for you to, to be aware, to have a consciousness of the warfare. Anybody here like that? Amen. Anybody else? Pray for me. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, I have my hand up. Help me help each of us, Lord, this night. Lord, to be mindful of our enemy. God, help us, Lord, to put on the armor of, of light. Help us, Lord, to put on the armor of God that we may be able to stand, having therefore done all to stand. And Lord, help us, God, to, to have discernment enough to know uh, when Satan's attacking us and help us to be able to fight the good fight of faith, Lord. I know in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us power. Help us to use that, Lord, in the right way. We give all praise to you. We give glory to you. In Jesus' holy name we ask it. And amen.